Guys and girls, this is Miss Brienne, and welcome to our monthly meeting of Code and Craze. And this is the program where series where we meet once a month on a Monday during the school year in order for me to do some detailed demonstrations on all the different coding toys, robots, computer software, and games that we here have to offer at the West Hampton Free Library as well as within my own personal collection. Now, as of right now, we are doing this virtually. Usually when we're in person, you, I usually give you guys, the boys and girls, the opportunity to try out these amazing products for yourself. But as of right now, we will be continuing to do this virtually until further notice. So hang in there, boys and girls. Hopefully once we get the word, we can start meeting in person again so you can try out these amazing things for yourself. But until then, please enjoy these virtual demonstrations. And look for some inspiration for them. You can re-watch the videos anytime you want. Isn't that a good thing? But anyway, I digress. Just so you know, this is our last meeting of Coding Craze for the school year. So we're not going to be meeting in the summer. We won't meet again until September. But I decided to end this with a bang. Now think about the two videos, video meetings we did in April and in May. In April, I taught you all, gave you some detailed information about the micro bit, like from here. And also in previous videos, I showed you the little bits. And you can go back to Coding Fun and some of my previous Coding Craze videos if you want to review. And I taught you how to use the Microsoft Make Code. Well, to end, our, to end Coding Craze for the school year, we are going to combine the, little, the Spiro's Little Bits, the BBC's Micro Bit, and Microsoft's make code in order to create a countdown alarm. Doesn't that sound like fun? Now before I begin, I just want to let you know, uh, Little Bits was acquired by Spiro in 2019. And look back on my previous video about Little Bits for more information on how they were created. The micro bit was created by the BBC and make code was created by Microsoft. To find out more information about them, please click on the links in the video description. But with that being said, it's time to create our countdown alarm. Now, this is going to be divided into three parts. Part one is to assemble the little bits into the, cir the circuit needed. Part two is to program the micro bit and, de up and download the program onto the micro bit. And part three is to connect the micro bit to the circuit, power it on, and test the alarm. Sounds like fun, huh? And it sounds a little complicated, but if you follow this demonstration closely, you will get it done. All right, so you need the following materials to create this alarm. Now if you have all of these and if you want to do it with me that is perfectly okay. Oh before I begin this this project is from the website Little Bits Classroom. So if you're interested in this as well as other similar projects please click on the web link in the video description. But with that being said let's begin our project. So you're going to need the following materials. First you need, the first thing you need is a P3 USB power bit. We're not using batteries, we're going to use a USB cable to connect it to our computer. Also going to need the USB cable to connect the PS3 power bit to our computer. In addition we are going to need a W1 wire bit with wire in and wire out. 
an I-5 slide dimmer input bit. an O11 servo output bit, the mechanical arm to attach to our servo, an I3 button input bit, Oops. a circuit mounting board, a micro bit, a, ca a cable to connect our micro bit to the computer when we up download the program into it, a P14 micro bit adapter imp wire bit, and finally something that our, the arm can hit. We are using a handbell. All right, with that being said, let us begin creating the circuit. So we're going to start by creating the circuit. The first thing we, we're going to do is we're going to take our P3 USB power bit. Let me get the, all this stuff out of the way so you can see what you can see. So we're going to take our P3 power bit and our I3 button input bit and snap them together. So that's the first part of our, that's the first part completed. Next, we are going to take our micro bit adapter wire bit and make sure the words micro bit front is facing towards your face. And see where it says. P0 right over here. We're going to take our connected power bit and button bit and we're going to connect the I3 button to P0 of the micro bit adapter. So now the circuit should look like this. Remember you're going to connect it to where it says P0. Oh and if you need to pause and rewind, review while you're work building this if you have the pieces, please feel free to do so. Okay, next up, we are going to take our I5 slide dimmer input bit. Then we're going to take our built, partially built circuit now look on the top where it says P2. You're going to find P2 right over here. You're going to take the slide dimmer and you're going to connect it to P2 of the micro bit adapter. So your circuit should look like this right now. Is everybody good so far? Next up, we're going to take our W1 wire bit. Then we're going to take our circuit right here and see where it says wire in. We're going to take that and we're going to connect it to the other side of the slide dimmer. Then do you see where it says P15 right over here? You're going to take the wire out. Oops. So, hold on. Just a little bit of a glitch. 
So we're going to take our wire outside part of the bit and connect it to P15 of the micro bit adapter. So your circuit right now should look like this. Okay, so next up we're going to take our O11 servo output bit. Then we're going to grab our complete, nearly completed circuit and see where it says P13 on the micro bit adapter. You're going to take your servo and you're going to connect it to P13 of the micro bit adapter. So here is the circuit. Then we're going to take our arm and we're going to use this third little cross thing and we're going to attach it to the servo. like so. See how that is? So now we have our completed, cir our completed circuit. Now here's our completed circuit. It's all interesting, right? But as you saw in the video, it could easily come apart unless we secure it to something. So what we are going to do is we are going to take our mounting board and as you can see there's like like if you look on the back of the circuit there's like things you can like almost like pegs that you can put in, in the holes on the mountain board mounting board so you're just going to take that and we are going to place We're just going to place our circuit, and you can do this however you want, on the mounting board. Let me just move this a little bit. So there you go. So now our circuit is on the mounting board. So, that is how you put together the circuit. Oh, and on the servo, make sure you see two modes, turn and swing. Make sure you set the arm to turn. If you have it on swing, it's not going to work properly. All right, so that concludes part one, building the circuit. Now, we're going to get to the good stuff. So we have our circuit with a micro bit adapter. The problem is, hold on. Sorry about that. We need a micro bit to put in the adapter. But in order to do that, we need a program for the micro bit to run, right? With that being said, we are now going to, oops, I'm blocking the view, hold on. We are now going to go over to our laptop, to the laptop. Now, as you already know, this, oops, hold on a minute. Sorry, I'm just trying to get this, this screen you could, so you can see it. So this is our make code editor for the micro bit. If you need more instructions on how to access it, please look at my look at my previous videos for reference. Now, before I start programming it, I just want to tell you a few things. And all this information is also from the little bits classroom. 
Now, you've seen the, you've, I showed you what the micro bit adapter is, right? And we have pins P13, P14, and P15. Now these are the pins that I connect, you know how I connected the servo and the wire to it? These are the pins that are used to transfer the program from the micro bit to the rest of the circuit. And if you use them, you need to program them specially. And they use something called either an analog write pin or a digital write pin. Now, if it's digital, it means you either turn it on or off. That's all you have. And, but you can't say that in words. You, they only use two num digital only uses two numbers, zero and one. If you set something to one, that means it's turned on. If you set a digital thing to zero, that means it's turned off. That's all you do, zero or one. And that's all it understands. Analog pins are a little bit trickier. They have a lot of different values. And they can go anywhere from zero to 1,023. Now you're going to use analog for the countdown. And we're going to have a countdown by 10. So if you want a countdown of 10, you take whatever the analog values you give it and divide it by 10. I know it's a little bit tricky. I'm not going to go into too much detail on it. Just giving you a little bit of difference between it. But with that being said, let's start, let's start programming our micro bit. So, we're going to go for our make code editor to new project. I may get in the way, I'm sorry, but let's give this a name, count down alarm Cre and create. Now the purpose of this is that it counts down for whatever value you give it and then once it hits zero it hits something to make an, a sound. So with that being said are you ready to begin? So we have two blocks already on here. We have on start and forever. Usually I get rid of one or the other. Today we are going to keep both of them. I'm just going to move this forward a little bit. Now we need to do a digital pin. Right pin because we're connected to P15 for the wire. So we're going to go to to advanced, then we're going to go to pins, and we're going to look for digital right pin, which is right over here. So we're going to connect that to, uh, to the on start box. And because we are looking at controlling the slide dimmer, and since our wire is connected to the P15 pin, we're going to select P digital right pin P15 and then we're going to turn that on which means we're going to turn up the value to 1 and that's all you need for the on start block now we got to find, program it to reset the countdown and yeah to reset the countdown and 
when to hit the alarm. So we are going to go look for, we need an if then statement. So we're gonna to go to logic and here is our if then statement. And we're gonna attach that to forever. And we need a not block because it's got to do something, it's got to perform something if we don't have an action. In our case, something's got to happen if we don't push the button. So we're going to find our not block. We're going to take it and we're going to connect it. It put it inside the if, the space in the if part. So we go if not. And we need to find a way to say pushing the button. Now in case you, in our previous video, our button is connected to P0 of the micro bit. So let's go to input. And we're looking for the block P, pin P0 is pressed. And we're not going to change that. We're going to take that and we're going to put it inside the space in our not block. So it should say if not pin P0 is pressed then. Now if we don't press the button, it's going to continue on to the program. Now we need the countdown. The problem is we have nothing that says countdown. So what we have to do is make it. So we're going to find variables and see where it says make a variable? We're going to press that and we're going to name it countdown. Then click OK. And then we have countdown, set countdown to zero, change countdown by one. So we're going to find our set countdown to zero. We're going to take it and we're going to put it inside our if then block. But we don't want to set countdown to zero. We need to we need to have it set to what, where we want it. Now the length of our countdown will be controlled by our slide dimmer. And our slide dimmer is attached to P2. So let's look at input. And we're going to scroll. Let me see if it's in math. Hold on one second. All right, so we're going to go to math. It took, sorry, it took me a while. And we're going to find where it says round. And it says round zero. So we're going to take that. We are going to insert it in our space where the zero is. And we're going to use this drop down arrow to change round to floor. Now, we want, don't want it at zero. We want it at, the count, at our countdown. So we're going to go to math. And we're going to find 0 divided by 0 here. We're going to take that. We're going to insert it in our space with the where, it's, where the floor block is. 
and we're going to change this. Now what we want to do is take whatever value our analog pin is reading and divide it by 100. So we are going to find our, go back to our pins and we're going to find where it says analog read pin. So we're going to take our analog read pin block and we're going to put it in the first space of our floor. Let me move this so you can see it. Analog read pin P0. We're not going to use P0. The slide dimmer is connected to P2. So we're going to select P2. Then we're going to have that take that value it reads and divide it by 100. There we go. So we got, have our countdown set. But we got, so our countdown set, but we got to make it go down. So we're going to go back to, we're going to go to loops. And we're going to look for our while block. So it says while true do. We're going to take that and we're going to push it, put it underneath the set countdown block. Now we're going to go back to our logic and we're going to do, you go under comparison and we're going to find where it says zero is less than zero. We're going to take that block, we are going to put it in our, this space in the while section. Then we're going to change the less than to the sign greater than or equal to. Now we need this value set at zero because once it's set zero, zero will do, it will, once it's less than zero, it'll start ringing the alarm. So we need it at zero. But we need to have it set, have it look at our countdown. So we're going to go back to variables we're going to select countdown and we're going to put it in the first space. So it should say while countdown is greater than or equal to zero. And then it tells us, then we're going to tell it what to do when the count, in order to count down, to show the countdown. So we're going to go to basic and we're going to look find our show number block and we're going to attach it inside where it's where to do is and we want it to display the countdown number so we're going to go back to variables and we're going to put countdown in this space over here where the zero was and we don't want it to go too fast so we're going to have it pause so we're going to go back to basic and find our pause button and we're going to put it underneath and we're going to select it, write a thousand microseconds. And then we're going to change the countdown. And it says change count, look, we're going to go back to variables, look for the block change countdown by one. We're going to take it and we're going to put, attach it underneath the pause. Now it says change countdown by one. What that means is it's going to go up. We don't want it to go up. We want it to go down. So what we do is in front of the one, we're going to put a minus sign. And that will make the countdown go downwards. All right, so now we got the countdown going. Now, when we got to do something once the countdown is less than zero. So we're going to go into a loop and we're going to use repeat something four times and do. We're going to take that block 
and we're going to attach it. So let me move this a little bit and let's put this forward so you can see. And we're going to change four to three. So repeat three times. Now we need to program the arm to move. Okay, so to do that, we need to do an analog now. Because we need it to, to move, the, we need the arm to move a certain width. So we're going to go to pins, and we're going to look for analog right pin, which is right over here, because we need it to do something. So analog right pin, and we're going to keep it set at 1023, because that would be the highest volume. But because the mechanical arm is attached to the servo, which moves the arm, we're going to select, it's attached to P13, the servo, we're going to select P13. And P13 is a pin that you can only program with. It doesn't read, it only sends commands. Then we need a pause because we don't want to go in too fast, so we're going to go to basic. We're going to go to pause, we're going to put the pause underneath, and then we're going to set it for 500 micros microseconds. Then again, we're going to go back to pins. We're going to find another analog right pin. We're going to put it underneath the pause. Again, we're sending it to P13 because that's where the servo is attached. And this time, to move it backwards, we're going to put the value at zero. And then last but not, then we're going to put another pause. Oops, don't want that. There we go. And then we're going to set it to 500 microseconds. And that is basically our program for our micro bit. Now, so we have our program, and what we're going to do is now we're going to put the program on our micro bit. So I'm going to, I'm probably going to be doing this off camera. I'm going to be attaching the micro bit to, going to be attaching the micro bit to the computer. Then, I am going to open up, for, select my file explorer, find micro bit. So we got a micro bit. Oh, but before we do that, hold on, made a mistake, we got to download this. So we're going to download. All right, so we downloaded the program. So let's go to our micro bit. We're gonna find downloads. We're gonna take our countdown and we're gonna drop it in. Hopefully this works. Had some issues when I was testing this previously, so I was, I'm a little nervous. And that's it. So I'm just going to close it out. I'm going to go disconnect our micro bit. So I'm just, this is going to be a little bit tricky, so give me some time because I got to set up really quickly. that 
you can see how this is going to work. So, get that out of the way. I'm going to zoom in on the micro bit. All right. So, we're going to take our micro bit. We are going to attach it. And the front part with the LED display should be on the side where it says micro bit front. So we just connected our micro bit to the adapter. Next up, we're going to take our power, our cable. We're going to attach the small USB to the power bit. And we're going to attach the big one to our computer to power. All right. So, we're going to move the slide dimmer to max. Now, see the countdown? Watch what happens when I press the button. So, it's at 8. That's fine. three times and once you keep pressing the button and if you keep pressing it well you'll press it again and you just keep do keep going with it you can you can, and if you want to change it, you can change it a little bit, and it lowers the countdown. Turn it up. And like I said, you can make the countdown as high or as low as you want. And that's how you make a countdown alarm. I'll show you one more time. And it's not very powerful. But it does the trick. And you can use this for a variety of things. You can do a countdown if you want to do a cleanup timer, or if you want to do a New Year's countdown, or if you want to do like singing happy birthday, or whatever you want to use it for. But it's a fun little project. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoy creating it with you. And I look forward to seeing you in September where we come up with, with a variety of different things. But until then, this is Miss Brienne saying take good care of yourselves. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the fall.